In this session, we will discuss the Biomart Packets. The Biomart Packets is an interface from R to a so-called Biomart. A Biomart is a front-end for a database, for a biological database. The idea is that any type of database out there that wishes to expose its information to the internet can set up a Biomart interface to the database, and then users like us can access the database using uh, a common set of tools to many different databases. So uh, multiple resources have set up Biomarts, uh, Biomarts interfaces to their, to their, to their data. Uh, for example, Ensemble from the European Bioinformatics Institute, um, the HapMap project, and Uniprod. So um, Biomart uses this Biomart interface to uh, query a database. And what you can get out of the database, of course, depends on what is in it. But it turns out that uh, there's a couple of databases in, like, accessible through Biomart that contains a wealth of information. So we will start by loading the, uh, the packets. And the first thing you do when you uh, set up Biomart is that you choose a database. And that consists of choosing a database and choosing something known as a data set inside the database. In, in Biomart Lingo, a database is called a mart, or a data set is called a data set. So there's a function called listMart that uh, shows which kind of uh, marts are available. This is something that is continuously updated. And uh, here I show the first six of them. And EBI is, uh, is, is heavily represented here. And a very common database uh, is Ensemble Genes 81. So we're going to pick that. Um, we, uh, we, we, we call it by Ensemble. And uh, if we print it, we are just being told that we have picked a database. We haven't picked a data set. So inside a database, there's multiple different uh, data sets. And uh, let's try and have a look here. And uh, we can see that, again, we print the first six data sets. Uh, this is uh, genes and then from a lot of different organisms. So each different organism is its own data set. And if you uh, look down the list, you'll, of course, find human. And that's what we're going to use in this example. And that is what I think a lot of people are interested in. So now I picked, uh, I picked, I have a pointer to the database. It's called Ensemble. It's uh, the Ensemble Mart and the H Sapiens Gene Ensemble dataset. At this point in time, it's important to emphasize that whatever you access from the database changes over time. Ensemble is very aggressive in, in pushing out new versions. We can see here in the screenshot that we are currently at version 81. And at any given time, a new version can come out. It's possible using, shall we say, uh, more uh, complicated setups to access old versions of the database, but I highly recommend that you query the database, you save whatever comes out of the database, and you keep that going forward. Uh, before we go on, uh, let us uh, look a little bit at the database from the internet. So it's possible to access the database uh, by going to the Ensemble website. So I'm switching over to Safari. And here I'm basically at uh, the ensemble.org uh, hit. And we can see here that the first thing it asks us to do is choose a database. And we pick the Ensemble Genes 81. And here we have a list of data sets. And we can see the most common species up here in the beginning. And we can actually see that when we are querying uh, Homo sapiens genes here, the genome version is... Uh, <coughs> the human, human uh, build 38. So Ensemble in general is very aggressive about uh, pushing, this, pushing the, new, the latest and greatest. And then once you pick the data set, you build a query, which means you ask for some data from the data set. Uh, that consists of picking something called filters and attributes and values, and we can discuss that when we go back in R. I find it useful sometimes to go to the uh, you, to, to the to the to the database through the web interface uh, to construct my query. Uh, yeah, it's useful sometimes. 
So let's go back to our studio. Uh, so we're going to do a little example here. We're going to say that we have some uh, identifiers from the app from an Affymetrix gene expression array. If you remember from earlier sessions, we have discussed um, Affymetrix uh, gene chips and how uh, <coughs> what you get out of such a, a gene chip is something Affymetrix calls a probe ID. <coughs> and this probe ID needs to be translated into a gene. So I'm going to say I want, uh, I have a list of uh, Affymetrix probe IDs and I want to get back uh, the gene name associated with these probe IDs. <coughs> a very simple uh, query. So I'm going to start off with something I call values, which are three probe IDs. In reality, of course, here you would have 12,000 probe IDs, or however many uh, probe sets you have on the array. The query I just said, uh, 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 you run using uh, the main workhorse at Biomart, get capital BM, or get Biomart, and you put in some attributes and some filters. <coughs> so what is that? We have some attributes. Attributes are whatever you want to retrieve from the database. Filters is a way of selecting what you want to retrieve, and values are the actual values of the filters. So what does this mean? Well, first of all, I have a filter and an attribute called affy underscore hg underscore u133 underscore plus underscore 2. That is the uh, name <coughs> of the microarray. This is an Affymetrix microarray, and why do I have it both in filters and in attributes? Well, you see here in the return object that I have uh, basically a data frame with two columns. One is the gene ID, and the other one is the uh, Affymetrix ID. And I need both of these two values in order to link up the probe ID to the gene. If I didn't ask to get the, the probe ID returned uh, by putting it in the attributes, I would just get a list of ensemble gene IDs, but I wouldn't really know which ID mapped to which uh, probe set. So that was the attributes. The filters is, in this case here, I want to, uh, I want to give it a set of values. That was my little vector here of identifiers. And... Uh, these are values that should be interpretive in context of the FE, HG, uh, and so on, of, of this particular variable. And I only want to retrieve uh, data that is kind of associated with this particular uh, uh, thing. So this is how you set up a query. You uh, select attributes, you select filters, you, you put in values. Uh, and the real uh, power here is figuring out what can I query and and, and how do I combine that with filters in order to get uh, useful information out? So in order to figure out what I can really do, there's a couple of functions. There's list attributes and list filters. So if you just call list attributes, we actually get a rather a substantial number of attributes back. There's 1,210 attributes. And we can see here that there's a name. <coughs> a name is what I'm going to put in into my get bm command. And then there's a description that is kind of more of a description of what comes out. And some of these are obvious, and some of these are a little bit more arcane. And sometimes you need to go to the uh, Ensemble website to really understand what goes on here. When you look at the uh, bottom of, uh, of the attributes, that's not a good example. So let's say tail n equal to 100. Okay, so perhaps not at the bottom. Let's take the last 500. You're going to see in here that uh, there's a lot with like gene IDs in weird organisms that are not human. And this here has to do with the ability to get a human gene ID and convert it into uh, the matching gene in a different uh, in a different organism or the ortholog. Uh, 
so basically for every kind of species they have access to in ensemble, and they have a lot, they have a number of columns here that translate genes from one uh, species into another. That's a bit of a pain to look at in the output because it kind of hides a lot of useful information, in my opinion. But uh, you, uh, you go through this one here and you find your attributes. In the same way, uh, filters, you can use list filters and uh, uh, you can look at what they are and there's a, a somewhat let, let fewer filters here. So setting up a query is like going through all of this and understanding it. And it can get uh, rather daunting. Now, one way to help you a little bit is that attributes, we have we had 1,210 attributes, are organized into something called pages. And pages is one of these things uh, that are kind of internal to the database structure, but that you sometimes get exposed to as a user. Okay, so... Let us just say the attributes are grouped into pages. So I can list the different uh, pages, which are feature page, structure, homologs, snips, and so on. And here on the homologs are all the things that I was like uh, uh, ranting about a few minutes ago that I didn't like to get in my output. So I can ask to get a list of attributes only on a specific page. And now I have something that uh, use usually is a little bit more tractable to look at and contains the, check, the things I really want. Here we can see a lot of affymetrics, IDs, uh, and things that kind of make sense, mere base, translation, like transcript, blah, 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 uh, all things that we, are, that we are usually interested in. So what's up with these, uh, with these uh, 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 pages? Well, you cannot make a query with attributes that belongs to different pages. So in order to link things together, there are some attributes that belong to more than one page. And uh, if you try to make a query where you want attributes using that spans more than one page, you get an error back and say you try to you know do this, uh, and you have to construct your query in such a way that you don't do it. So the way to get around that is to query whatever there's whatever is to query the pages individually and then somehow merge the uh, results back. So you get a set of you get a set of results for each page you query and then you have to merge them based on some kind of identifier. Finally, um, uh, sometimes when you use Biomart you get uh, duplicated uh, rows back in your data frame and that is a basically a consequence of how the database works internally. Uh, you should just know it because sometimes it's a little bit uh, surprising. So you can do a lot with Biomart and uh, it has a really good vignette that I highly encourage people to read. Uh, uh, there is, uh, I think, around 10 different uh, more and more complicated tasks where they uh, show how to construct the query and look at the, and the output from Biomart. So this here is a an, an awesome package. It uh, was quite a boost to uh, <coughs> to Bioconductor and people who use Bioconductor when this package was uh, introduced uh, a long by now a long time ago. It's been in heavy use, and you'll find that uh, a lot of people yeah have access to it.